Gentlemen, welcome back to the adventures of the Squirrel. While we're waiting for some bits and bobs to come from the UK so I can finish working on the on the engine, um, there's always lots of other little things to get done. And one of the jobs I've been putting off for quite a while is fitting an electronic voltage regulator. The old voltage regulator was working okay, um, but this is really about reliability and um, the sort of future proofing build. Also one of the things that I've spoken about a couple of times now is I've decided to go from 6 volt positive earth to 12 volt negative earth, so kind of traditional to modern. So the driver behind that, or the main driver behind that, is another nod to just being a bit modern and having an old bike on modern roads and um, trying to be as safe as I possibly can. I've decided to swap to a metric speedo. I decided to swap the old Smith's Corona metric to a um, GPS sensing metric Smith's Chrono electric. Yay! Um, to do that I need to be on 12 volt negative earth. So very much a style of the of the traditional chrono, uh, chrono metric. Um, but of course it's in kilometers and it's going to be a lot more accurate. Um, so the old regulator is an unknown quantity. Very hard to find. Right, so what are we going to do? We're going to fit an electronic voltage regulator. Um, there's a number of options on the market. Uh, this one, according to Dragonfly, is the one that is the most reliable when fitted to square four arrows with their um, rather large dynamo. So we'll trust that and run with that. It can be used as 12 volt or 6 volt. They come standard at 6 volt. You snap that little, cut that little loop wire there, and you have a 12 volt regulator. Um, that's pretty much it. You can fit it anywhere on the bike, so you can tuck it on the frame or anywhere around the dynamo, uh, sorry, around the regulator. In this case, I'm going to take it, the old pole type and we'll set it inside the box. So to get him off, a couple of screws in the bottom, possibly have to drill those guys out, but I'll, I'll ping the solders and, and see what we've got underneath. A little bit of a clean up. Of course, that's 60 years of grime on that. Um, then we'll figure out how we're going to mount that. Right, onto it. So we've pulled apart our voltage regulator. Um, this is the sort of older style um, two pole one. Around about 1960, they swapped to a three pole one, but um, that's progress for you. So, do we have a wee look at what makes up a regulator, or what makes a voltage regulator regulate? So this side is the voltage and current regulator, this side is a cutout. So what do they do? So it has a set of points, um, but like a mechanical points and ignition, they have a, they have a gap you need to set. Um, around the back are two set screws for set, setting the um, cutout position and the, the required voltage and current. So, key off, cars in the garage, uh, points are naturally closed, um, turn the key on, power flows back through the circuit into the, into the generator, start the engine, generator starts generating, power flows back, speed up, maybe highway speed, daytime, no lights on anything, light load, the voltage rises, um, the old generator might put out something like 20 volts um, if it was left to its own device not what you need on a, on a 6 volt motorbike or 12 volt or whatever you're running so when it hits a predetermined voltage the points will open um, that'll collapse the voltage um, a bit like an ignition coil really voltage collapse, points close again, voltage builds up open, close, open, close, open, close um, it vibrates very, very fast until you hold a steady state. Again, this is adjusted at the back on a test bench. So what does a cutout do? 
Um, perhaps an opposite hops of purpose. So he's naturally open. What happens here when you're producing voltage? Um, similar to this side, there's a magnetic field in here, pulls the, the contact shut, um, and that allows the current to go through the battery charge the battery. And um, also goes off and charges the, the other components, uh, not charges. It also goes off and powers your lights, powers your ignition horn for annoying pedestrians, that kind of thing. Okay, you pull into your garage, turn the key off. Um, you don't want that connection still connected because there's no current going this way. What will happen? Battery voltage will then drain this way. And no auto electrician, but um, so don't pick holes in this, but a battery voltage might be, say, well, sorry, battery current might have 60 amps or something like that. It's going to start feeding back down the cabling back into the generator. Uh, not great when your cabling's, hey, on a on a good day it might be good for 20-25 amps. Um, I don't know what a, what a generator would, would take, but it's certainly not going to take 60 amps or 80 amps or whatever your battery is going to try and push down the road. So that one opens, cuts the current. It's kind of like a one-way valve. The so current can only flow to the battery. It can't flow back out of the battery, back through the, through the regulator. In a nutshell, that is it. So we haven't wrecked them too much. If some future person needs a good working regulator, um, that's fine. The base I've given a bit of a rattle can paint clean up to, make it pretty. Probably can't see on the camera, but there are markings on here. F, A, E, D. Um, they're connecting to the F for field windings on the, um, on the generator. D is for the dynamo winding on the generator, or uh, it's to the armature side. So D is to the armature side of the generator, D for dynamo. E is for earth, and A is for, could be armature, but it's not, it's for amps, that's your power out. Um, this one's pretty knocked about and worn, so I've got my little label maker out and labelled the inside. Again, just to make it life easier for anybody later on. So we're going to fit a electronic voltage regulator. Um, this gets rid of the mechanical marvel that was before, just for a little bit of modern reliability. Uh, fun fact, if you put a battery in reverse polarity, um, the things that will give that away, first off, your ammeter will rev it up and the ammeter will be um, discharging rather heavily instead of charging rather heavily. Um, but the other thing, you'll hear these points on the regulator going absolutely berserk. Um, it'll start whirring and clacking like a, like a crazy thing. I'm not sure what happens if you keep it that way, it'll probably burn out after a time. So, electronic regulator. Um, this, like I mentioned earlier, um, this is a 6 volt one, but to make it a 12 volt one, we just snip that loop wire. I guess there's a resistor or something in there that knocks it from 12 down to 6. Uh, so we'll insulate the ends so they don't touch, but it can just snip again. If someone wants to change it back to, to 6 later on, that won't be a problem. Um, again, that wires are labelled FADE, uh, same as these guys here. I was going to look at um, being clever and terminating them uh, inside the box, but the more I looked about how to mount it and everything, uh, wasn't really practical to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount them here. I'm going to push the wires down through there. And then when we put the wiring loom on the bike, um, I'll just terminate them in here somewhere. It would be a strip connector or a Deutz plug or, or whatever, not sure yet. I'll also label these wires, um, again just for save later on, make it a little bit easier to, to make sure I know which way they are. Right, that is the job for the morning. Ooh, and then I get to my, use my cool Lucas Gen 1 old stock alloy cover, which I'm quite excited about. So that was a Lucas 2 pole, 6 volt, positive earth, voltage regulator, converted to 12 volt, negative earth, electronic regulator. A, Quite a straightforward job, um, 
and small but important leap forward in, in the restoration of the bike. So I've left the tails um, long, it's there. I've labelled them so that I'll know what goes where later on, so I can take the cover off again. Um, I think that's come up pretty good, very happy with that. So, just wondering what we'll be working on next. Hmm. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you even more for liking and subscribing. And let's see what the next video is about.